welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about the A71 Samsung cell phone. We're going to be going over all of the settings. So stick around. I give you just the facts. Let's jump into the cell phone. The way to get to your settings is you can pull down your screen and tap on the settings gear. As soon as you tap on the settings gear, you will see connections, and this will give you your connections for your Wi Fi, your Bluetooth, your NFC, and payment. If you want to choose flight mode, your mobile networks, data roaming, oval calls, network mode, access points, and network operators. Your data usage, it'll tell you exactly how much data that you have used and whether your data saver is turned on or off. You can look at your mobile data. You can also set apps to always use mobile data even when your phone is connected to Wi-Fi. And your mobile data usage, your billing cycle, and data warning. Your mobile hotspot and tethering. And here is more connections. The next tab down is sounds and vibrations. Here, you can look at your sound. You can turn on your sound, you can vibrate, or you can mute. You could also choose vibrate while ringing, and you can choose your ring tone just by changing your ring tone. You can choose your system sound. Galaxy Calm Fun Retro. And here is your volume button for your ringtone, for your media, just by sliding back and forth, you can turn the volume up or down. Notifications system. You can hear that. And this is called Bixby Voice, in which we will cover in another video. You can also use your volume keys for media. You can control the media volume by default when you press the volume keys. Volume keys are located at the side, the right side of your phone. This is the up key, which will turn my volume up. This is the down key, which will turn my volume down. You can click on the downward arrow and you will see the exact same. You can look at your notifications. You can choose suggest actions and replies, swipe left or right to snoop and app icon badges. Your status bar, do not, do not disturb if you don't want to be disturbed. Then you could look at all of your different notifications and choose the ones that you want to turn on. Just by going through all of the different places and decide which you would like to turn on. Next is your display. Here you can choose the light or you can choose the dark. You can choose your brightness. And you could choose something called adaptive brightness, which will help if you are on your cell phone for long periods of time. You can choose to turn the blue light filter on or off 
and you can also choose your screen mode vivid natural vivid natural if you choose vivid you can choose the white balance in it you can always go to your advanced settings and you can choose your white balance your your red balance your green balance your blue balance You could look at your font size and style simply by using the slider bar you can make your font larger or smaller you can also bold your font This setting can stretch apps to use the full screen space if they don't automatically. Not all apps will change size. Go through your apps and decide which ones you would like to make sure they use the full screen size. And here is the full screen apps. This setting can stretch apps to use the full screen space if they don't automatically. Not all apps will change size if you turn this on. Go through, turn the ones that you would like to see turned on. Screen timeout. This will shut your screen off when you're not using it, which will save your battery. So you could go for 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 2 minutes, 1 minute, 30 seconds, or 15 seconds. Whichever one you choose. You can customize your home screen to show a button on the home screen that opens in the app screen. App icon badges. You can lock your home screen layout. This will prevent any items on your home screen from being removed or repositioned. You can add apps to the home screen. Swipe down for notification panel. Now you want to click all of these on and rotate to landscape mode. You want to make sure that's clicked on as well. You can also choose easy mode. You can use a simple home screen layout with bigger on-screen items, a longer touch, and holder delay to prevent accidental actions and high contrast keyboard for better readability. This is what the easy mode will look like. I, mine is on easy mode. The edge screen, showing notifications in smaller pop-up with lighting effects. Edge lighting is on and about edge screen. So let's go. Edge screen will bring up You can use the buttons for navigation. You can use the swipe gestures or you can also use the back gesture sensitivity. If you're using a case, it might be difficult to do the back. So I am using a case, so I cannot do the back gestures, but you can swipe from the sides or the bottom. This is the one that I've got, which is swipe from the side, from the bottom. Or from the side. You can also use the buttons. The buttons are located at the bottom and you can see these three straight up buttons 
will give you all of the pages that you are working on. The bottom button will take you to the home screen. And this is where you can add all of your contacts. This button will cause you to go back to the last place where you were at. And this button is your transcribe. And here you can transcribe anything just by talking into your phone. This will come in handy when you are creating your step-by-step -step videos. To see your buttons, you will just you can just see your buttons at the bottom. Accidental touch protection. You can protect your phone from accidental touches. Touch sensitivity. Increase the touch sensitivity of your screen for use with screen protectors. Show charge information. This will show the battery. This is right here. You can see that it's charging right now. If I turn this off, You can turn this, whoops, sorry. You can turn this on or you can turn this off. Now, I'm just gonna, I can see where that is. There we go. That's what that does. It will bring up your charging information. You can also use a screen saver. You can use colors, photos, a photo table, or from your photos. Just by clicking on each one, and here you can preview. Here you can see whatever you want to use. You can use the settings, and you have to allow. Your photo frame will bring up what you allow it to show. Just going to select all. Okay, go back. Preview. So it will bring up different pictures. In your photo frame, you can also have a photo ta tab table. And here you can again choose different places that you would like to see your photos come up from. And you can preview. That's for your screensaver. If you're looking for something else, you have language and input, which is your keyboard, visibility enhancements, and always on display. Language and, e and input will show your language, will show your on-screen keyboard. It says I'm using the Samsung keyboard, Samsung voice input, Google voice typing, and Gboard. Physical keyboard, not connected. Spelling correction, autofill service. This is the Samsung Pass. We will go into that in another video. Personal dictionary, English, you can add words. Enter a shortcut so you don't have to type in 
the same word and put it in your personal dictionary. Text to speech. Here you can choose your preferred engine, which is Samsung text to speech. English, French, Spanish, as an example, voice settings, your language, your speech rate, and your pitch. Your pointer speed. You could go slower or faster. And your primary mouse button, left or right. Next, you have your wallpaper. This is what will appear when your phone first comes up. So you have my wallpapers and you can choose one that's preloaded. Set it as your home screen, lock to screen, lock and home screens. So we'll just choose as a home screen. This will now become my home screen. You can choose any one that you would like. Your gallery. This is where you, you will find your videos, your favorites, and your recents. So everything that you do will turn up in your gallery. And to select anything, you will just click on this circle right there. You can look at your videos that you created. You can look at your favorites, if you have any, and all your recent stuff that you've already done. Here you can see your pictures and you can see any albums from different places, such as Facebook, the emojis, downloads, camera. You can lock your screen, and here you can see your screen lock type. Here I have fingerprints and I have PIN, and I will go over that in another video. Your smart lock, you can keep your phone unlocked when it's in a trusted location or if it detects a trusted device nearby. Just by clicking into that, use your current PIN. So use your smart lock when you're in trusted places, trusted devices, or on body detection. You can lock automatically, lock instantly with the side key. And here is the auto factory reset. After 15 incorrect attempts, Unlock your phone. To unlock your phone, it will be re reset to the factory default settings and all data will be erased. No, you really don't want to do that just in case. You can if you are sure that you're going to remember your PIN information. Show lockdown option. Display a power button option that turns off smart lock, biometrics, unlock, and notifications on the lock screen. If you choose that, you will then be able to see the button option. Always on display, tap to show. Wallpaper services, clock style. These are your two different clock styles. Always on display or lock screen. And then you have your type of clock that you would like to see. This is quite easy. It all depends on what you would like to see. You can add an image or an animated. Whatever you would like, you can also change your color. And then when you're done, click on done. your contact information,
notifications, shortcuts, which are your bottom corners. Biometrics and security we will go through in another video because it is quite large. But basically, this is what face recognition, fingerprints, biometrics, pet preferences, biometrics, security patch, Google Play Protect, security update, Google Play system update, find my mobile, Samsung Pass, secure folder, install unknown apps. This is if you ever are trying to install an app and you can't, this is where you will find your install unknown apps that you can allow to be installed. Encrypt or decrypt SD card and other security features, which we will go through in another video. Your privacy. This is your permission manager. It tells me there are six apps with full access to your phone. You can send diagnostic data if you choose. You can receive marketing information if you choose. Samsung Privacy, Customization Service, Device personalization, personalization Services, Autofill Service from Google, Google Location History. This is where it shows you where you have been, what you have done, activity controls, the same thing, ads, usage, and diagnosis can turn this on if you choose. Your location. This one will let apps use Wi-Fi for more accurate location detection. And this is Bluetooth. If you use a Bluetooth, you can turn this on or off. And you can see the recent location requests from Chrome and Facebook, location services, emergency, Google location, just tap in each one of them. You can see Google location, accuracy, emergency location. It is equipped with a lot of different emergency and information. Accounts and backup. This is when you are changing your phone and you want to back up and restore or use the Samsung Cloud up your phone and sync your data or a smart switch which will transfer the content from an old device to a, a new device. Google settings. This will show every new phone you will see here the COVID-19 exposure notifications. You have to install an app to turn that on. You can use this. You can download the, uh, the special app. And turn it on. And then this will tell you if you have been exposed to anybody that has had or has COVID-19. And of course, you have all your other Google information. Advanced features we're going to go through in another video. Digital well-being and uh, parental controls. This will use app timers and other tools to keep track of your screen time and on the plug for more easily. Parental controls. You can add content restrictions and set other limit limits to help your child balance their screen time. Device care, battery, storage, memory, and security. You can choose optimize now. We'll optimize your device. Tips and the user manual. You can go through each one of these to help you to understand your phone, be more productive, do more with notes, take expert shots, have some fun, 
become a power user, keep your phone secure, link your phone to your PC, and get to know Bixby, the user manual. We will go over that in another video. This is important. Here you will find out about your phone. You can find out your phone number, your model number, your serial number, your IMEI number, your status, legal information, software information, and battery information. And this concludes this video tutorial on the settings of the Samsung a71 if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the description and if i can answer them i will and leave a comment saying what kind of experience you have had with your samsung a71 thank you for watching stay safe and have a wonderful evening